Fight! Bangeholix, how are you doing? You guys seem to have enjoyed the new format, so I'm gonna keep doing them like that for a while at least. It's a bit more editing for me, but I, I think it's worth it and makes the videos a bit more interesting. Once again, I'm uh, painting a scene from Wonder Boy 3 on Master System. It's the intro screen, it's got a blue background, a dark mountain and a castle on the uh, left of the painting. Uh, the first thing for me to do here is to do the sky and I used two, two different uh, types of blue. I used uh, a phthalo blue for the uh, darker blue um, and the sear, 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 uh, another blue for uh, the lighter blue and mixed with a tiny bit, very tiny bit of, uh, of white, uh, titanium white for the bottom. And I sort of blend the two um, together uh, as I go and I use a, a small uh, brush at the end, a uh, dry brush, uh, it's really important dry brush at the end uh, to blend the uh, two areas together. The uh, color blends is not entirely uniform, it just makes things a bit more interesting uh, for the eye. And then um, I use a brush uh, with some uh, of the lighter blue and I apply that very very gently on the uh, top on the darker blue just to create some cloud effects and I use a tiny small brush then with some uh, a lot of white and some blue just to um, sort of draw the outline of the uh, of the clouds and you can have to be gentle there at this stage and use a, a dry brush then just to blend it uh, together after uh, each pass. I don't detail the clouds very much they're just impressions of cloud really because they, they're not meant to be the focal point of the piece the, the castle will be um, but once I'm happy with it I can start on the foreground. So what I'm going to do here is just create multiple layers of mountains. There's only one layer in the original piece, but here I'm going to create some uh, layers going in the background. So one thing to understand is when you create stuff in the distance, you need to use pretty much the same color you have for your background, your sky, if you will. So your typical rule for this would be to decide what colors your mountains are going to be and to use that color in very small increment for each excessive layer of, of mountain. Also, your sky should be your brightest base color for each layer. Layer. Um, so each successive layer should be darker than your sky and you can see here I've made a mistake I've actually made the first layer on the bottom right um, brighter than my sky so I'm gonna correct that and make my sky a lot lighter at the bottom um, but it, it creates a sort of a, a rising atmosphere and, and, uh, and fog um, coming from the ground that's the idea of, uh, of having that color blend so I'm spending a lot of time just blending my bottom, uh, just to make sure it's actually uniform. I'm actually going to paint over all this section, so it's just a reference, but essentially um, you can see the fog is rising from the ground and, and from there I can build my mountains. And here you can see already it works much, much better. The color of my first layer of mountain is a derivation of the color of the sky. And it's blending properly with my sky, it makes it look like it's coming from a distance. So right here we have our first outline. I'm not going to worry about the details yet uh, too much. I'm just going to draw my uh, my layers of mountains. I'm using a yet darker blue, um, almost like the uh, the blue from the middle of the uh, of the sky, and I'm creating a second layer of mountains. And you can see already that it just blends properly. It just creates that distance between each uh, each layer and the sky. You get a sense that they are actually uh, at a different level, not just overlapping. Another thing I'm doing is I'm not reloading my brush too much, or if I am, I'm actually using the paint for the uh, top uh, edge of the uh, layer, and I'm blending that color into the uh, the sky uh, color. And you can see here I'm correcting the first layer, um, and this is for the same reason. It just creates that sort of fog in between the uh, the, uh, the the two uh, mountain ranges. It just makes them pop out against each other, and it creates an edge, a strong edge between uh, both layers. So they, they really look like there's some distance in between them. And finally I'm painting the third mountain range. This is the one you see on the uh, on the artwork, the original artwork. Um, one trick here is uh, is uh, not to worry too much about your other layers. Try to make it as uh, as organic looking as possible. So um, I, I know you might be attached to what you've done in your previous layers but they're actually just anchor and guides for uh, for the, the rest of your painting. They're just there to add a tiny bit of detail. Um, so you shouldn't be too attached to them. So here I'm detailing the uh, mountains. I'm using some uh, some of the uh, lightest uh, blue for the background mountain. Uh, for the uh, middle range, I'm using the color of the background mountain to create the highlights. And for the foreground, I'm using um, 
not quite a mix of uh, it's a mix of uh, of gray and the uh, color of the second uh, mountain range just to create that volume so um, the trick here is to really take your time just add uh, small bits here and there uh, first on the highest peak or the the most obvious ones and then just take your time so, so I'm just going along the edge of the uh, of the mountain and then I'm just gonna define other uh, other section and um, the fact that I've blend my uh, my color which has actually pure black into the uh, the background color just allows me to sort of naturally discover areas that would be brighter or would be hollow or would be deeper and then uh, I use that as a anchor point for uh, for detailing the uh, the the, uh, the rock formations that uh, could be on the on the on the mountain uh, range here and what you get at the end by just letting the colors uh, guide your hand is just um, a very organic and natural looking um, sort of rock formation um, I, I use that technique a lot and it, it just works every time um, I very much like it I haven't detailed it too much because at this stage uh, the detail is going to be where the castle is so I'm just going to draw the castle um, and I use just the outline I use black uh, just to outline the castle very often I'd use white or black uh, depending on, on what the, uh, the color I'm painting over is uh, white is very handy because it it, it can be uh, it can be removed or, or painted over very easily. Uh, black is a bit harder, so you, you know if you want to use black, just make sure you're uh, you're confident with your uh, drawing skills. And once I'm happy with my outline, I start coloring in. Um, essentially, it's paint by numbers at this stage, but I work from the uh, the darker colors to the brighter colors. Typically, I work from bright to uh, dark because it's it's easier and makes things look cleaner. But here, I work from dark to light. Uh, also, you can see uh, on the mountains there's a light source coming from the right that's actually uh, you know highlighting all these edges. So uh, you need to um, reflect that on your castle as well. So I'm just making the uh, left side of the castle slightly darker. Uh, sorry, not the, just the left side of the castle, but the left side of each element of the castle. So those towers, uh, to make them a bit rounder and look like the, the light is coming from the right, I'm just going to make slightly darker on one side than the other. And then as with the um, the other uh, Wonder Boy tree, I'm just working successive layers of uh, brighter and brighter color uh, into smaller and smaller areas. So that just creates that sort of roundness and uh, the light source. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry my hand is in front of it, there's not much I can do, it, it is still a, a traditional painting. It's not digital, so um, yeah, my hand has to be there and it's hiding a lot of, uh, of the stuff I'm doing. But, uh, Maybe next time I'll try to find a better angle, uh, a camera angle for the details. But you can see here each pass, I'm just refining my edges, and then uh, um, um, the castle is getting brighter and brighter each pass. Uh, keep in mind all the time to, uh, whenever you put a highlight, to have that highlight slightly more on the right, because that's where the light source is coming from. But I keep working at it until I'm happy with the, uh, the, the the way everything looks, and then I cast my shadow. So, uh, as you can see, the the, the bigger uh, tower has at the bottom uh, sort of a diagonal dark line going into it, and it's just the uh, shadows being cast from other buildings. It just looks a bit more natural. Uh, to do this, I use uh, just the darker color of my uh, my castle piece. Dilute that with a, a, a bit of water, not too much, otherwise it'll actually smudge and just go all over the place. But um, so that's it's it's semi uh, transparent and then uh, just draw over everything so you'll keep that uh, the the uh, the relation between each color but um it'll just uh, look make look like you know shadow is being cast over uh, different areas it's uh, it's uh, hard to work on a small scale like that but uh, i think it's uh, it, it came out all right so um there you go i hope you enjoyed it uh, that's the uh, finished piece. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And let me know again if you if you still enjoy these or if you're sick of my voice at this stage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.